some things that work to deal with this stuff. Um, I'm going to close with these few things and then we'll take some questions. So hypnotherapy is, has been shown to be helpful um, and the improvement is lasting. Um, a Cochrane review said the quality of trials was inadequate to draw conclusions. Um, a review of 18 studies, 10 out of 18 showed benefit. The limitation of the studies is lack of randomization, which is difficult to do. But, you know, my conclusion on things like this is why not try it? Nobody gets, if, unless you have a particular um, aversion to trying it for any reason, but, you know, you're not going to be harmed by it. So hypnotherapy might be worth trying. What we know works is cognitive therapy. Um, I've been recommending cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT for a long time, for many, many years. Um, it's a very specific form of therapy that is highly effective in a short period of time. And maybe sometime I can do a whole workshop just on that. But for purposes of, of right now, the difference between CBT and a lot of other therapies, it's very present focused and skill-based. In other words, you feel anxious, all right? So we're gonna talk about why you feel anxious and it may have some relationship to a lot of things that have happened to you, but the biggest thing is to make your quality of life better. Let's just talk about your anxiety, the things that seem to trigger it right now. And then let's talk about some things that you can start to do right away to reduce your anxiety. Um, there's very little recidivism associated with cognitive therapy. The key is finding a good cognitive therapist. A lot of people claim to do it who actually have never had any specialized training. So a lot of people claim to be in the diet and lifestyle business. You don't necessarily help people with diet and lifestyle. You got the same thing going on here. Well, anyway, researchers um, notice that the change in belief and negative perception of IBS is very important. Um, it results in, in um, uh, you know, so CBT is designed to change how, how people think about illness. In other words, you know, the fact that you have gas is not a reason to stay home from work. It's just not that big a deal. The fact that you have a headache once in a while is not a sign that you have a brain tumor and that this does help. 20 patients with IBS randomly assigned to CBT, 10 sessions over eight weeks or eight weeks of symptom monitoring, 80% of the CBT group, so clinically significant improvement, 10% of the monitoring group. And the improvement was correlated with increases in positive and reductions in negative autonomic thoughts. All right, so uh, automatic thinking. Um, another randomized control, mindfulness training is shown to be effective for improving symptoms, uh, health-related quality of life and reducing stress. Um, there's a, there are um, many, many books out on mindfulness training, but just being able to focus on what's going on right now and, and have an objective view of it, okay? So that's, that's one of a cognitive skill. A randomized controlled trial, patients randomized to internet delivered CBT online or discussion forum. Uh, internet delivered CBT was effective for the treatment of IBS and the expenses for the treatment of IBS went down an average of $16,800 per person. Um, another trial showing the same thing, 61 patients randomized to 10 weeks of internet-based cognitive therapy or weightless control for 10 weeks. An online, and what they did was online therapist-led sessions emphasized acceptance of symptoms through mindfulness training. Uh, 50 of them completed post-treatment assessment and there was more uh, improvement in the CBT group. And we, we, see, we send all, all of our patients who are willing we send them to, um, to see a cognitive therapist. We don't see this getting better at all without some therapy. I'm clearly not a therapist, but we have wonderful therapists to whom we can refer people to. Um, it is not expensive because it's time limited and assignment driven. I tell people cognitive therapy is a lot like piano lessons. You don't learn how to play the piano in the lesson. You learn how to practice and you go home and learn to play the piano on your own at home and then go back in for another session to learn how to go home and practice again. And that's much the way that a lot of cognitive therapists work. Um, there's some patient, there was some patient dropout which was associated with more symptoms and significant impairment. Uh, another study, 24 IBS patients randomly assigned to a combination of behavioral therapy and standard medical treatment or standard medical treatment alone which was a visit to a gastroenterologist every two weeks. Um, significant improvement in the CBT group, none in the treatment or the uh, standard treatment group, which just goes to show that treating this as a biological condition that is somehow gonna get better with drugs or with um, 
change diet. I mean, there are reasons to change the diet besides this, but but change diet is not going to make this better, and medical treatment doesn't make it better. Another study basically showing the, the same result, 257 IBS patients comparing psychotherapy, antidepressant, and usual care. Um, difficulties with uh, social inhibition and dependency were associated with longer du disease duration. Uh, changes in interpersonal problems were correlated with changes in pain. Again, all of this to show you that there's a psychological component to this that will, if you don't address it, this will not ever get better. Um, improvement only took place in the therapy group. So the conclusion was improvement in interpersonal problems and relationships is important if you're going to improve the health of IBD patients. So most of us who focus on the physical aren't very good at helping out with this, right? You got to send them to somebody who can. 69 IBS patients randomized to CBT or weightless group. The class included education, self-efficacy, and relaxation techniques. The CBT group improvement in GI symptom severity, visceral sensitivity, depression, anxiety, and catastrophizing. So uh, one last one I'll show you, 75 IBS patients randomized to 10 session CBT with therapists, four session patient administered CBT or waitlist for 10 groups. Both of the CBT groups did better than the controls. Another study, same thing, okay, usual treatment compared to CBT. So in conclusion, um, most IBS patients benefit from adopting a better diet and taking probiotics. Most people, if you have nothing wrong with you, you benefit from doing this, okay? Um, but due to the high prevalence of psychological distress, the, the very common patient history, there's something in, in their history, abuse, uh, parent family issues, related factors, um, if you don't have psychological intervention, you're not going to get recovery. And so to the point, and I mentioned this earlier, if you have a person who says, I have IBS, and that individual changes his or her diet and it goes away, that person did not have IBS. And I've read books by people who say, I cured my IBS with diet. I am glad that you felt better after you cured whatever you have with diet, but a true IBS patient does not get better with diet alone. And that goes to the difficulty in diagnosis and the fact that I mentioned earlier, a couple times actually, there are a lot of things that are being called IBS that aren't IBS. Um, cognitive behavioral is, uh, therapy is very effective. It's time limited. It has a very low recidivism rate. It can be delivered by if you can do self-study. There, are, We have a list of books we give people that you can just start doing this on your own at home. I think some people need a therapist, particularly if the issues are significant, um, such as a history of abuse or something like that. I mean, I, I don't think that that's a good thing to try to sort out on your own. Some people do it, but I think most people need some help. Um, but it can be done by phone. It can be done by internet delivery. It can be done face-to-face. -face and and you know, so, so you have a lot of flexibility. We have a therapist who does sessions, um, a cognitive therapist who does sessions in groups and individually uh, by phone very, very successfully. And, um, and so that makes it less expensive. Um, it's cost effective and it addresses the causes. So um, again, this is a biological condition. And when I talk about the psychological issues, it's not in somebody's head. I, I, they're not making it up. This is different than people who always claim to be sick who aren't sick, all right, the hypochondria. This is actually going on. The discomfort is actually there. But what I'm telling you is there's a component of it that um, goes beyond all of that, beyond the physical, and it will not get solved unless that psychological factor is uh, dealt with.